Ignis, and we're back with another Fallout 76 video. So, well, <coughs> you're probably wondering, how's he got so much stuff right now? Well, this is actually my initial save, not my um, secondary one I made for YouTube. <coughs> but, um, <coughs> well, we're not going to be playing this. Um, so, let me just quickly take off my helmet so I can look a little bit more serious and I'll slap some glass so while I'm at it. <clears throat> We're not playing Fallout 76. We won't be. Said we're going back to hear about the Charleston condo. Um, from, I believe it was my first actual gaming video, so yeah. Um, update video for this coming momentarily. But, um, yeah, we're here to talk about why Fallout 76 won't be covered anymore on this channel. So, before we get into it, we're going to need a little bit of a history lesson. The original Fallout game came back, came out all the way back in 1997, September 30th to be exact, with Fallout 2's release following exactly a year later. Interplay went bankrupt in 2003, which led to the rights to Fallout being sold to Bethesda in 2007. Fallout 3 was released October 28, 2008. New Vegas was then released in 2010, October 19. Fallout 4 was November 10, 2015. And then 76 was November 14, 2018. So it's been slightly over a year since the release date at the time of this recording. So, how about we start with some of the controversies surrounding the game? So, first of all, the canvas bag that came with the Power Armor Edition. So, in the advertising materials for it, it was advertised that the bag was to be canvas. And without notifying anyone, the Power Armor Editions were shipped out and the canvas bag was revealed to be made of nylon. A 500 Atom, which is the microtransaction currency for Fallout 76's Atomic Shop, was offered, which equates to about $5 US. Which is absolute garbage, considering you're mainly paying for the canvas bag, and then the power arm helmet. The map and miniatures are a bit of a side piece. So, let me just quickly fix my camera, there we go. So, you can tell that the fan base was not pleased. And the um, can sorry, canvas bag pre oh, sorry. orders for actual canvas bags were placed after the fact. And it took them about four to six months to be distributed. And they were sent out by June of 2019. And. Uh, yeah, like, this just goes to show that Bethesda's a bunch of idiots, and thought, Oh, snap, we haven't got all the stuff we need, we're just gonna make it out of nylon and cop out on it. And the stupid thing about that, is that Bethesda lied, initially. They said that the uh, canvas was too expensive for them to be able to use. When in actuality, it was a... When they actually believed it to be a canvas shortage a few months later. So, they need to either get the story straight or make up their mind as to what the real problem was. And another thing regarding that... The canvas bag, as advertised, was sent to influencers and big, fancy, uh, you know, like, high rollers that know what they're on about. And, um... The apology, which included, of course, the 500 Atom, was just BS. It was it was garbage. It was absolute bullshit. Bethesda needed to get stuff sorted out. If there was a change, they had to announce it. It's quite simple. And uh, this next little bit leads me on to my second point. When the customer support uh, section on the Bethesda website opened up for the canvas bag, there was a glitch in the system which allowed for people to close down other people's support tickets and also a list 
of information about customers was leaked. Which goes to show that Bethesda does not care. Like, at all. So, that brings me on to the tech support and glitch side of things. The dev room was accessed because Bethesda didn't remove it from the release version of the game. And if it was a single player game like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, that'd be all good. It'd be fine. In fact, that'd actually be a great thing because there'd be weapons you'd be locked out of getting for certain choices you make in your quest lines. But with Fallout 76, it's designed to be multiplayer experience. So, what are you doing, Bethesda? Sort your crap out. And having it accessed actually broke some of the in-game economics and broke the game itself in some places. And, well, Bethesda tried to find out how people accessed it to patch it. And most of the people who accessed it sent what they'd gotten over to their main accounts by using a DUD account to access it. And they did nothing to reclaim the DUD accounts. So, yeah. That just goes to show Bethesda is further idiots. In addition to this, at the end of last year, start of this year, at the time of this recording, the nukes were disabled. Because Bethesda had not um, decided to set the server clock to run over multiple years. If they have not patched it properly, it will happen again at the start of 2020. And every other year to come until it gets properly patched. Then we get to merchandise. The Nuka Dark Rum was delayed from its August release of, well, from last year, at the time of this recording, to December. And was just a glass bottle in a plastic shell. The fans were expecting an actual glass bottle that was shaped like the proper Nuka Cola bottles and Nuka Dark Rum bottles you find in Fallout 4 Nuka World and the base game of Fallout 4. Which just goes to show, Bethesda needs to get that advertising together. Plus, with the pricing, it was bullshit. It was absolute crap. Bethesda needs to figure out what the hell they're doing with their prices and think, oh, we're just giving them bargain basement rum in a plastic shell within a trashy little glass bottle. Let's charge them a stupid amount of money for it. And then we get to the Nuka Cola power arm helmets. So, Chronicle Collectibles produced about 20,000 of these, and uh, as such, it was limited quantities. Um, they were distributed to a variety of stores, 32 of which were sold at GameStop retailers. There were a few problems, we'll, we'll put it delicately, such as there being freaking mold in the bottle, sorry, in the helmets. Mold. Clearly, Chronicle Collectibles, who Bethesda had hired, does not have a decent track record with this. Because models, well, the helmets that had mold were recalled. No incidents or injuries are known of. And GameStop notified their customers and offered them a full refund. See, at least GameStop offers a proper refund. Bethesda, you need to sort this out. If a retailer sells your merch, is giving a full refund, yet you're not, it shows there's a problem with you. Not with the retailers or the fans, it's a problem with you. Then we've got Fallout First. It was announced October 23rd, 2019. It's basically Fortnite's Battle Pass in Fallout 76, which is bullshit enough. I mean, if it was just adding in a few additional emotes and then maybe weapon skins that did absolutely nothing, yeah, it'd be kind of cool, it'd be fun. But it's been adding in content that should have been in the base game. You know, like unlimited storage within a stash box variant, fast travel points that you can place wherever on the map, and of course, private servers, something everyone has been wanting. Since the game's launch. Heck, since before the game's launch. And Bethesda teased, hey, we're going to probably be doing private servers. But they didn't do 
private servers properly. And they waited just shy of a year of after the game's release to add it. And they decided to add it through a freaking subscription service. That's absolute fucking bullshit. And then we'll get to the launch information. So, you'll remember when Todd Howard came up at E3 last year and said, Hi, you know how Fallout 76 is a thing? You can play it solo. Despite being an online game. They didn't explain... Well, sorry, he didn't explain what playing it solo means. Because there's no solo player mode, there's no offline mode to play it. You have to play it online, meaning you have to deal with people. Which, when I'm playing my Fallout games, I don't like dealing with actual people. I play the games so that I can just be me and be stupid and do all kinds of crazy crap. And, oh yeah, the beta for 76, that was tied to the pre-order. You had to pre-order the game just to get access to the beta. And, um, Todd Howard's infamous line about there being 16 times the detail of Fallout 4 is further bullshit, because the detail, graphically, is less than or equivalent to Fallout 4 in most areas. Only, like, three areas exceed the detail, which is rubbish. PC games, well, sorry, gamers that use PC have to use the Bethesda launcher. They can't launch it through Steam or any other method, which is bullshit because if you're a gamer, Steam is literally what you use. That is the definitive game service for computers. And oh yeah, did you hear? The PC version of the game can delete itself. Which, that actually happened. A bunch of times for a bunch of people. And then comes the physics of the game. It's tied to the frame rate and it could allow speed hacking. It was fixed in mini quotes, according to Bethesda, by capping it at 62 frames per second and then it was later on capped. Meaning Bethesda doesn't know how to solve their own problems. And then we get to patch size. The day the game came out, as soon as you loaded it up, Hi, we've got a patch for you. That's literally what it has been. But that's just, hey, we've got patches. Big ones. Have fun with that. And I think this might, this game might actually be a contender for biggest game patch in history. Right up there with Assassin's Creed Unity. And at launch, that wasn't a Field of Vision slider at all. You had to wait for that to get added in with a patch. And the game was a technical mess. So, yeah, between all the you know, friggin' access to the dev room, the nukes being disabled, the uh, game just being glitchy, like glitching through the floor, um, uh, invisible mobs showing up, all that kind of stuff, the game was not fit for release. It was not in a decent state at all. There was also a lack of mod support straight out of the gate, which, given it's a server-based game, is understandable. They announced private servers. Private servers didn't get added in until October of the year this video was uploaded. Still waiting to hear if those are going to be mod supported. What are you doing, Bethesda? And in addition to that, design, the design aspects of the game were rather questionable. The way PvP works, so... With how PvP functions, until you hit level 5, you can't engage in PvP at all. Which is play versus play combat for those of you who don't know how acronyms work. So, the uh, whole thing with that is you have to wait till level 5 before you can start killing fools, and you have to mutually agree for it to be PvP, otherwise, um, uh, you literally just stand there and take hits. And another thing, if you just stand there and take hits and not agree to the PvP, whoever kills you, if they kill you, that is, ends up becoming a murderer and can't see anyone else on the map, which, it's an interesting and actually surprisingly fun game mechanic, but at the same time, it, it it's just questionable sometimes. Um, the lack of the 
of NPCs other than hostiles. Again, same deal. It's a Fallout game. You can't just rely on holotapes and locations to tell the story. You have to have characters there to talk and fill you in. Thankfully, they're remedying that with Wastelanders mode. Which, well, if that ends up actually being any good, I might consider covering Wastelanders mode. But that remains to be seen. Um, that's working in real time. So, since Fallout 3's engine was done away with for an upgraded version of it for Fallout 4, that's has changed heaps. Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 didn't have VATS, same deal with Fallout Tactics, but it had a very similar system where you can target. When Fallout 3 rolled up back in 2008, it introduced the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, also called VATS. It completely stops time, lets you target enemy limbs, and fire away. Um, Fallout New Vegas kept that same function because it was cool and it functioned the exact same way. When Fallout 4 hit back in 2015, that's slow time. Now, I can see why Bethesda would do that. It's to make the game more balanced and be a bit more challenging, but come on. You had a system that worked fine, then you just stuffed it. And then when Fallout 76 rolled up, I can't believe I'm saying this, that's became real time. Forget slowing or stopping time. We're not... Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or anything, we're simply just going to s keep time flowing. And you are inhibited slightly in what movements you can make. Um, then, the carry capacity. So, in case you're unaware of how Fallout 76 character creation works, you only get one special point for each stat right when you start the game. You don't get to allocate, like, five or however many special points you want to a single stat. I mean, Bethesda has actually cut back on that a bit. I mean, Fallout 3 in New Vegas, you could allocate, like, nearly 30 points and still have a base of one for each to work from. Fallout New Vegas kept the same thing as Fallout 3 did. Fallout 4, you had about 25 or something, about 20-odd points to work with. Which, it makes the game a little bit more challenging, I will admit, but, yeah, no sleep lost over that. Then there's just 76, you can carry barely anything when you leave the vault. You have very poor endurance and everything else because you have won everything right when you start. I get why Bethesda did it though, and it's just for game balancing, but come on. You could literally have gone any number of different ways about it. Just have it be, hi, you all get 30 skill points and an additional one for each of your stats to work with. Have fun, go crazy with that, and set your character up how you want. Because it then adds a level of uniqueness to every character right when you start the game. Which is what Bethesda needs to do with Fallout. And as such, that affected the carry capacity, and the fact that you can't store unlimited items in your stash box. And containers that you place at your camps don't work the same way. It's a little bit annoying, but again, I can kind of see why. And just all the bugs, between graphical glitches, falling through the floor and all that stuff, and textures not rendering in properly. Yeah, um, 76 had a lot of bugs. Um, and a lot of glitches that'd be exploited as well, to make to list. Um, with how patches work. So, when Bethesda releases patches, for, like, any of their games, it's to fix problems. When Fallout 76 received its patches, they caused more problems. They covered up some problems, repaired a few, and then just ripped open holes all elsewhere on the rug. Or fabric, uh, or sheet of fabric, or hoodie, I don't care what you use in that analogy. And, um, in addition to that, with the patches, incomplete patch notes were released. It nerfed the game without telling the players. It's actually stupid. Then we go into microtransactions. So, the prices are ridiculous. For something that you can get for, like, five or six bucks 
on Creation Club, you have to drop like nearly 20. And a lot of the content on Atom Shop is part of the Fallout 4 base game and stuff you could get without having to drop like 20 odd bucks. Some of the stuff is, albeit brand new and fully unique, but come on. Instead of selling individual items, sell it as a big pack and have it for like 20 bucks. And say, hi, we've got a massive new pack of DLC for you guys. If you want to buy it, we don't particularly care. Because we, with how Fallout 7, no, no sorry, with how Fallout 4's uh, microtransaction equivalent works, it's essentially, hey, here's the base game and a bunch of things that you can buy that we'll be constantly releasing fresh ones of and occasionally having discounted and or completely free for a decent amount of period of time. And yeah, just get it if you want. We don't care. And in addition to that, Bethesda said microtransactions were not going to be pay to win. And yet, a couple months later, they decided to release the Unstoppables costumes. Which, if you're playing in a squad with people, where everyone has a unique costume, you get a special buff. And, like, I think the damage resistance or something increases. So, you're effectively paying to get better gear. And um, in addition to that, with how microtransactions are, Bethesda refuses to refund anything unless it's legally required by law within your country. Which, like, it's stupid because keep customers and keep the Fallout franchise going, as well as have the game actually be popular, it makes sense to refund it. Even if it's just in part. And, well, yeah. I don't really need to say much more. So, what, what's the verdict here? Will we be covering Fallout 76 again? No, unless Bethesda gets their crap together, fixes the game, actually starts giving a damn about the players, and provide Wasteland mode is actually decent. I might use footage from Nuclear Winter mode occasionally in update videos, but again, that remains to be seen. Anyway, it's... Yeah, well, it, it's a touchy subject at best. So, um, yeah, it's been your boy Ignis, and I'll... Uh